Today's video is about the top five quirkiest cars of the 2010 decade. Now, this video will probably come out in the 2020s, and that's okay for people who are watching this, so just consider it last decade. But these cars are quirky just because they look weird, or they didn't necessarily sell well, or they're just quirky in the way that they are. And in order to be in this list, it has to have come out in 2010, between 2010 and like 2015, so it had time to actually sell in the United States. And that's it. It does not have to be anything else as long as it came out in this decade. And so let's go ahead and see what the quirkiest cars of the decade were. Number five, the Toyota CHR. It's up here because, well, obviously, it's interesting styling. And um, when you think of Toyota, I'm pretty sure you don't think of a... I don't even know what that is. It looks not very good. But um, you definitely don't think of this when you think of Toyota. You probably think of a Camry or Corolla or, if you're being really creative, a CHR. Except... No one thinks of a CHR. That's a problem. Number four, the BMW i3. Again, on the list because A, styling. And B, this is something BMW doesn't usually create. Now, in this level, in this i range series, there's the i3, this weird thing. And then there's the i8, which is um something that most people aspire to get when they're about 25 years old. Even though we would know that they probably won't even be able to get a slightly used one. And then, again, there's this, which um is also electric, but uh, it's very, very interesting. It doesn't even have rear doors. And um, that, that just makes it even more complicated because, um, yeah, it's just very weird, very strange, and very unlike anything else BMW has made. Maybe they should have made an electric 3 series instead of this because it's priced just above the M3. Number three, the Nissan Juke, and um, it looks like a cockroach. I mean, this thing is very ugly. It's big eyes, it's bulging fog lights. They really wanted this car to pop out to anybody. And it certainly did pop out to anybody, just not in a good way. This car is strange looking, and um, that's about it. It's normal on the interior, except for a very ugly plastic centered console dial thing, and it's matched to the color of the exterior color. So if you have a vibrant yellow juke, you also have a vibrant yellow interior to match your exterior. It's very, very strange, and so is this car. Number two, the Hyundai Veloster. And I know that most people say, well, this isn't even a quirky car. You see a lot of these on the road. They're normal. Yeah, they are normal for people who have three doors. Yeah, this car has three doors. Again, it's very odd styling. And all of these cars are really built to to aspire to people who are like 23 and just need a car to get around. And they don't want a boring old Sonata or Elantra. And then Hyundai says, oh yeah, well, you know, you got the Veloster for like $36,000. You know, you can come out and get that, you know. And only six people went out and bought the Veloster because um, anybody who's going to a Hyundai dealer probably doesn't want a three-seat, three-door car. It, it, it doesn't make sense. Anyway, before we unveil our number one pick, some honorable mentions. And you're probably looking at this and saying, okay, Kia Soul, Ford Ego Sport, and that Eclipse Cross. Why are, why are they honorable mentions? The Kia Soul... Um, because this came out at the very beginning of the decade, 2010. And um, Kia didn't think it was going to sell. They thought they were going to discontinue it. Okay? 
B, they marketed this car to a rodent. Its spokesperson was a hamster. So, you know, you got to give it a little bit of credit for that. And Ford EcoSport, um, nothing really too quirky about it except for the fact that it has a three-cylinder engine in an SUV. Okay, and you're saying, okay, well, there's a lot of cars with three-cylinder engines. Yeah, none of them are SUVs. For context, the Ford EcoSport has three cylinders. The Mini Cooper has four. This car, Ford EcoSport, has three cylinders. The Fiat 500 has four. There's not a whole lot of three-cylinder engine cars going about there. And um, if you're comparing its engine size, its best competitor is a Mitsubishi Mirage. And honestly, it's really just a little bit bigger than that. And that's it. Mirage is probably faster because it's lighter. They really had to be sticking a three-cylinder engine in there. And you don't even get a V6 at max. You get a four-cylinder, which is probably the best they could fit in there. And then finally, the Eclipse Cross. Um, being a Mitsubishi is a quirk in and of itself. Being a Mitsubishi SUV is normal. But being a Mitsubishi SUV named after a famed Eclipse is not normal. Nobody really knew why people named it the Eclipse Cross. They probably should have just named it something simple. And, you know, it probably would have sold just like the Outlander. But no, no, no. Mitsubishi had to throw some quirks in there. So they gave it, or they named it, rather, the Eclipse Cross. It is very, very strange. The back looks like a Pontiac Aztec. It has no business being a car in today's era. But the number one best or quirkiest car, I should say, is the Honda CRZ. And I honestly don't care if you think that the number one quirkiest car should have been something else because this is my list, not yours. The Honda CRZ is very weird. It's very um, aerodynamic. It's a hybrid to get some of that extra range, but we all know how Honda and hybrids work. Insight didn't necessarily sell too well. They're just now getting some traction in the hybrid world, so this was definitely a flaw. And also, it's a hybrid with a manual transmission. Think about this. It really doesn't have any business having gears, and yet... It's got a manual transmission with shiftable gears. And that's not too strange because um, Honda definitely showed us with the first generation Insight that that's possible. But it's very, very strange because I guarantee you don't see a Prius going around there shifting its own gears. Like it's some 2004 Ferrari with the gated shifter. It has no business doing that. There is no Chevy Volts. Nothing with an electric motor shifting its own gears. It is very absurd. And um, that's the reason why it's the number one quirkiest car of the decade. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed. I, I will see you in the next video.